pants. Again, in the faded soldier blue, which I think is such a stunning combination, and uh, the, the black boot. I notice that there are a number of um, uh, hidden zippers in these jackets. Now, what are these for, Betsy? They can't be for, is it for mad money? <laughs> well, it depends on where they're placed. They can be wherever you want them. Uh -huh. For the pockets so that no snow gets into it, the zipper holding the hood in because it's easier to put the hood on and off mm -hmm. with the zipper than it is with the snaps. Mm -hmm. Then there's zippers up the side so that the jacket will fit tightly around the hips, keeping that straight, sleek look that it should have. And very often you'll find a zipper hidden in the uh, arm. And Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You'll excuse the fact that I'm out of breath, but about 10 or 15 minutes ago, a tragic thing from all indications at this point has happened in the city of Dallas. Let me quote to you this. And I'll, you'll excuse me if I am out of breath. A bulletin, this is from the United Press from Dallas. President Kennedy and Governor John Colony have been cut down by assassin's bullets in downtown Dallas. They were riding in an open automobile when the shots were fired. The president, his limp body carried in the arms of his wife, Jacqueline, has rushed to Parkland Hospital. Uh, and if you'll excuse me if I give some directions and we talk about what we're going to do here for the next few minutes, but Bobby, let's tape this, if you please, particularly the interview with the eyewitness people. It is being taped good. Here's a uh, piece of copy that was rushed uh, to me and was torn off from the United Press in Dallas. President Kenny has been shot in Dallas, has been shot in Dallas, Texas. He was shot as a motorcade left downtown Dallas. Mrs. Kennedy jumped up and grabbed the president. She cried, oh, no, as the motorcade sped on. An Associated Press photographer, James Algens, 8-L-T-G-E-N-S, reports he saw blood on the president's head. The AP man said he heard two shots but thought someone was shooting fireworks until he saw the blood on the president. He also said he saw no one with a gun. Uh, we were awfully close, Jerry Haynes, as you know, and Mr. Peppermint, we were awfully close to being an eyewitness. We were standing on Houston Street between Main and the next street over. Jerry, come in, w would you please? Uh, and the next street over, we watched the president come by and gave him the applaud that is due the office of the president of the United States. And as he turned left, two or three shots rang out. We thought they were firecrackers until, uh, I thought they did, until the last shot rang out and we heard people screaming. And we rushed over in time to see a policeman standing behind one of the fire poles look, looking around as if to, uh, for some place to shoot, someone to shoot at. Uh, I'd like to remind you here that as the news comes in to the newsroom, we will be on the air. We'll have our eyewitness people here in just a moment. Uh, Vicki, would you see if they need some coffee or something? These people are awfully shaken up. They come awfully close. They were in the line of fire. Jer? I remember, Jay, you said, uh, I thought it was, you know, uh, a uh, firecracker. firecracker or something like that. And then they followed one shot and then a second or two later, another shot, and then another second or the two, third and then one. the third shot, and you said the man's been shot at, and we both turned. No, I said, my God, that's gunshot. That's right. Oh. And then we turned right over, we were behind uh, Mr. Uh, Dealey's statue, right. and we ran over to the, uh, right. the cement wall, and we saw people beginning to scatter in places, and I believe our eyewitness right. was on the ground. Chair, would you do me child. a favor? Would you go check in the newsroom now, and as the men come in from the field, or if they have stories, uh, please let me know and also okay. get someone to check with we were supposed to take the feed from KRLD They may still be doing a feed from there. check and let me know and until our news crew gets back in we will sort of use this studio uh, As our headquarters uh, these people and you will excuse me. I don't want to interrupt you I I'm so sorry because I know that you are so upset, but I would like to talk to you for a minute It's a little bit awkward. So the camera shots will have to fall as they may I'm gonna stand right here and maybe somebody can give me a chair while we're doing this. May I have your name, please, sir? Bill Newman. And this is Mrs. Newman? Yes, sir. And this is? James Clayton. James, and this is? Billy. Billy, tell me what you saw and what you felt. What happened to you? We were, we had just come from Love Field after seeing the president and the first lady. And we were just in front of the triple underpass on Elm Street and we were at the edge of the curve getting ready to wave at the president. So you, were down, uh, you were down under the viaduct, so to speak, weren't you? Well, we were halfway in between uh, on the grass, the triple under, underpass. We were at the curb when the incident happened. But the president's car was some 50 feet still yet. In front uh, of you? In front of us, coming towards us, and we heard the first shot, and the president, I don't know who was hit first, but the president jumped up in his seat, and I thought it scared him. I thought it was a firecracker, because he looked, you know, fair. 
And then as the car got directly in front of us, well, a gunshot apparently from behind us hit the president in the side, side of the temple. Did, did you, do you think the first gunshot came uh, from behind you too? I, I think it came from the same location. I, uh, apparently back up on the, the uh, uh, mall, I don't know what you call it. For the benefit of nomenclature, all of you folks have gone out under the viaduct, and as you turn, going under the viaduct on the left-hand side, there's some grass. Uh, do you think the shot came from up on top of the viaduct toward the president? Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, not, no, not on the viaduct itself, but up on top of the hill, on the, the little hill mound of, uh -huh. of ground near the garden. How far away do you, would you say that is from where the president was? Uh, a couple of 300 yards, something like that? Well, I have no idea because I, I didn't see the, the, where the gunshot come from. Uh, we were looking directly at the president when he was hit, mm -hmm. and he was more or less directly in front of us. And, uh, we didn't realize what happened until we seen the side of his head uh, whenever the bullet hit him in the head. Did you see the blood coming seen from the that. president's head? Yes, yeah, sir, we seen that. I seen that. I don't know if my wife did, but I seen that. Did oh, you? yes, sir, it was awful. It, it is yeah. awful. I saw it. What kind of work do you do, sir? I'm a construction worker, electrician. Is this the, uh, is this the first time that, uh, that you have seen a president of the United States? Did you see when he was here before, in 1961? No, sir. Uh -huh. No, sir. Uh, your housewife... Yes, sir. ...took the day off to come downtown and see the president? Yes, sir, we did. We wanted our children to see it. Uh -huh. uh, were you in the line of fire? I noticed... I, re I remember vividly whenever uh, I walked over and looked over the banister there and saw across the street that you were down on the ground uh, so that uh, to keep out of the line of fire. What was the first thought that struck your mind? Oh, I, I thought it was a firecracker, and I saw the blood, and I... I had the baby, and I, I just ran, and we, I got on top of him and laid on the grass. I, I was, it just scared me. It was terrible. Did you see anyone else hit besides the... Uh, I, I'm, uh, Go Governor Conley was kind of turned was to the side, and he grabbed his stomach. His stomach. There, there, okay. Thank you. Jerry, if anything else comes in, we heard a report, and I'd like to say here, for the benefit of you folks who are tuning in, uh, who have tuned in late to watch Julie Bunnell's show, that... Uh, we interrupt this the program, and our program will be interrupted all day because uh, it is apparent now that President Kennedy, Kennedy has been shot. We have no word in our newsroom, but we are standing by in our newsroom. And uh, would you uh, work as a runner with the newsroom and as anything comes in? And if you get any of the boys that come in that have been, been gathering, uh, gathering the news, please bring them in so that we can have them on the air. Here is another word. Uh, we know, as we carried here and all the stations carried this morning, the president spoke this morning in Fort Worth. He flew to Dallas, and that coverage was on. He landed here about 1.30, between 1.35 and 1.40. Vicki, did you get the coffee for the people? Bring it on in. Um, he was to deliver a speech at 1 o'clock this afternoon, and he was on a motorcade and only about, I guess, two or three miles from uh, where he was to make the speech in the trademark whenever this terrible, disastrous thing happened, and it happened in our city. Uh, Secret Service agents that were in the car immediately began following the president. They pulled automatic rifles. Uh, I was an eyewitness to one of the policemen standing there behind uh, a, uh, a tele uh, uh, light pole, and you'll excuse me if I'm frustrated, you would be too, uh, standing there with a pistol in his hand. The bubble of the president's car was down when the shots rang out. In fact, if I remember correctly, when they took off from the airport, there was no, uh, there was no bubble on the car. The president slumped over in the back seat, face down. Conley lay on the floor of the rear seat. Wounds in the governor's chest were clearly visible. This is from the United Press. The wounds indicated that an automatic weapon was used. Three loud bursts of gunfire were heard before the president and the governor fell. Uh, it, it, just a few minutes before, Jerry Haynes and I, the president smiling and his lovely wife smiling. Uh, did you have, do you have any idea which direction I'm sorry, I forgot your name. I forget my name at this Newman. Mr. Newman, um, do you have any idea which direction? Would you like to go ahead? Excuse, go, go right ahead. I'm so sorry that you're so upset, and I hope we're not prevailing upon your good nature to have you here, except uh, with the news like this. Uh, Mr. Newman, the do you have any idea which direction the shots came from that hit the president or Connolly? Did you say that one of the shots came from one direction and one from another, it seemed like? No, sir. I, actually, I feel that they both come from directly behind where we were standing. Right behind you. Um, the president, it looked like he was looking in that direction. Uh, I, I don't know whether he was hit first. Apparently, he wasn't. It looked like he 
jumped up in his seat, and when he jumped up, well, he was shot directly in the head. And it, uh, I don't know what you call it, the, the mall behind us, but apparently that's, that's, that's where he was. Where, I know that a few minutes after that, when I came over there and, and asked you people if you would be kind enough to come over and be on our station today, I know that uh, uh, the police were all taking back, uh, taking off up the ramp and over. Everybody was going in that direction. Toward yes, the railroad. Sir. Yes, sir. Cars back over in there. I, I just hope the man that, that shot the president, I, I just hope they don't kill him. I hope, I hope he lives. I hope he just lives to regret what he did. And that's. I want to comment. So now, excuse me. Every, Jerry Haynes, you know Jerry, our Mr. Peppermint. Jerry and I were within 100 yards of where the president was shot. And Jerry, you'll have to. There's another mic here somewhere. Can we excuse our impromptu? Uh, here we go. Can I turn this? Is this one on now, Bobby? On the Associated Press, someone had asked one of the presidential advisors or companions uh, for any news, and he refused to comment. They asked if he had been wounded fatally. And this was about five minutes ago that came over about the same time I brought that bulletin in. Do we have a report yet from Parkland Hospital? Is there any word from there? No, not yet. Uh, Vicky, will you check in the newsroom and see if uh, see if any of the newsmen are there? See are we, if are we on tape on there? We're both. We're on the air now, and we are taping the, the, the program, too. Uh, your first appearance on television, I take it? Yes, sir. It's not and isn't it a shame that it's under the conditions that we're under now? Yes, sir. It's a shame. Uh, I would like to recap a little bit for those of you who might have turned in late. Jared, go ahead and uh, just do as you have to do to see if we can get some further details in here. And also, you might check with Don Easterwood and see if there is some way we can get a telephone in here that can we can that we can take beep telephones. Will you, Jared? Or someone? Good. I'd like to uh, I'd like to recap for you the reason we are on the air. And it can best be said by these bulletins from the United Press, and then I will tell you what I know. Uh, the bulletin from the United Press. Thank you, Helen. Uh, President Kennedy and Governor Connolly of Texas have been cut down by assassins' bullets in downtown Dallas. They were riding in an open automobile when the shots were fired. The president, his limp body cradling the arms of his wife, Jacqueline, had been rushed to Parkland Hospital. A follow-up on that from the United Press. I read just a minute ago. Well, I can't. Yes, here it is. Let me, I think I can best explain it to you in my own words. We were about 100 yards. If you're familiar with Dallas, Houston Street is on top of what we call the underpass, and the road curves down and underneath the viaduct. Jerry Haynes and I were standing there, and we heard one shot, and then immediately thereafter another shot, and then a third a little bit later, and I said to Jerry, my God, that those were gunshots, and we ran over, and unfortunately, I'm afraid they were. It's nothing new, but it just Is it a recap? Yes. This we have, we have said. Uh, excuse me one minute, and let me... A quote, Clint Hill, a Secret Service agent, this is from the United Press, Clint Hill, a Secret Service agent assigned to Mrs. Kennedy, said he's dead as the president was lifted from the rear of the White House touring car. Mr. Kennedy was rushed to an emergency room, and I believe it's Parkland Hospital, is it Jack? You have nothing? Okay, Jack Draybont, one of our producers, walked in. Other White House officials were in doubt as, as the corridors of the hospital erupted in pandemonium. We have told you where the incident occurred. Uh, what is the name of that street? Where he, was, uh, where he was shot. Well, I suppose it's a continuation of Elm as it goes down. Yeah, it must be that goes under the underpass. He was slumped in the back seat of the car, face down. Conley lay on the floor of the rear seat. And also, a few minutes ago, John, uh, the newsman, I can't think of my he, name. No, uh, John Allen, told me that he heard a report from one of the radios, and this is only a report, uh, that there were four or five other people hit. I don't see how there could be, because I know there were only there three. Three shots. There were there were only three shots. Jer, where's your mic? I got something to say, but might as well have you here. Right. Well, I almost didn't go over with you, Jay. Uh, uh, we were going out to lunch at I know. 12, and you said... I asked Vicky to go over, too, and you had some other work to do, and also Norvell Slater and some of the other people. 
The time is one o'clock. I would guess that this happened. I ask you what time it was at 12:30. Yeah, so I would guess that this happened about 25 minutes until one o'clock. You, you and I were chatting about 12:30. Uh, some little uh, boys uh, were standing uh, around, and I'd signed some autographs as Mr. Peppermint. Right. They asked where Jingles the Dragon was, and I said he was in school. And the mother said, "Well, this is where." A he day was in was Dallas, Texas. Texas. He came to see the president. Thank you, Jack. If any of the newsboys come in, or if there are any beep phones come in that we can have transferred here, and you better get Don Easterwood, who is our audio supervisor, to see if we can take them here and put them directly on the air. Put them directly on the air. Representative Albert Thomas of Texas says he has been informed that both President Kennedy and Governor John Connolly of Texas are still alive. Let me repeat that. This is a bulletin. Representative Albert Thomas of Texas says he has been informed that both President Kennedy and Governor John Connolly of Texas are still alive. Thomas made a statement outside the emergency room in which both Kennedy and Connolly are under treatment. He said he had been told the president is still alive, but is in very critical condition. We will be on the air here. We will, I know our boys are developing film now to see if we have any film coverage. It, we, coverage. we are regrouping in the newsroom. And I, Bob, I would suggest as soon as you can that either you break one of these cameras or one of the other cameras and put it in the newsroom and maybe a headlight on top of the camera and let's move in the newsroom. Uh, get an audio line set up there so that we can work directly out of there and find out exactly what's going on. Uh, we hope to God that this is true. I don't know when I am. Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, we have to get a tripod on one of the cameras. We can't get the three cents. So I see. Ahead. Okay, fine. Then we'll move in the newsroom. Uh, Representative Albert yeah. Thomas, and this I'll repeat again, Representative Albert Thomas of Texas says he has been informed that both President Kennedy and jo Governor John Connolly of Texas are still alive. He made this statement outside the emergency room in which both Kennedy and Connolly are under treatment. He said he had been told the President is still alive, but in very critical condition. Nora, what do you got? From, uh, it's the same Jim Wright. Same thing. Well, let's read the whole thing here. Some of the Secret Service Jim agents Wright. through the through the gunfire. Well, that doesn't, let's see. Some of the Secret Service agents thought the gunfire was from an automatic weapon fired to the right rear of the president's car, probably from a grassy knoll to which the police rushed. And that was confirmed a few minutes ago by Mr. and Mrs. Nunley, who were eyewitnesses to this event. And we will have them back a few minutes later in case some of you are late tuning in to our program. We would like for you to, uh, we would like for you to hear, uh, gee, I'm so old. That's okay. Uh, uh, in other words, they fired into the car as it came down. And these people were in the line of fire. As a call has been sent out. For Congressman Jim Wright of Fort Worth said both Kennedy and Connolly were seriously wounded but still alive. A call has been sent out from some of the top surgical specialists in Dallas, and a call also went out for a priest. It's unusual, uh, the reaction you got when you receive, when you see someone, well, of course, like the president, such a political figure. It's as almost, uh, well, there they were in front of you and I, and it seems to me that the president looked directly, because uh, uh -huh. we were applauding, yes, directly, I'd say at you probably, because uh, a little taller than I am, and there he was, and he waved at you, and then they rounded the corner, and just a few seconds later, we heard the shots. I would say a minute mm -hmm. before. And the lady uh, had a camera, I remember, was taking personal films of it. Yeah. And she, I think, was an eyewitness, and she had come running over and crossed the street. Screaming, yeah. Yes. Just a minute, yeah. Don. The cruiser's on its way to Parkland. The cruiser is it's, on it's, its, it's, it's at Parkland. It and is. Be feeding in before long. All right, stand by. We we have a our remote cruiser is on its way to Parkland Hospital, and we'll be feeding there as soon as possible. Bob Walker will be there. Will someone please see if they can get a hold of the cruiser and Bob and tell him that we will work audio cues on the air because the people understand the uh, the type of program. It's not a program. And you'll understand why if we say, uh, yeah, the notice about the call going out for the priest. Well, I think this one sentence uh, sums up the situation as of this moment. A call has been sent out from for some of the top surgical specialists in Dallas. And at the same time, a call has gone out for a priest. It's uh, three minutes after one o'clock. Jerry, somewhere around 1235 this took place, so 30 minutes ago. Would you, while I get a breath and a drink of water here, recap the situation as to until now? Right. We'll be moving in our newsroom so that we can talk to the boys in the news department as they come in. Our cruiser is now on its way to Parkland Hospital. Uh, we will keep you up to date as soon as... It's at Parkland Hospital. It is at Parkland now. still have to hook up, though. 
and they're trying to get it hooked up. Jerry, I'll be back in a couple of All minutes. All right. Well, as an announcer, it's my duty, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, stand by in the announce booth here at WFAA-TV. And we began our feed of the president's arrival this morning. Uh, it was at 9 o'clock. And he was uh, speaking at Fort Worth, of course, as you saw on Channel 8 or any of the other television stations in this area. And he made a very fine speech lasting at some 15 minutes in length. Then he went outside and uh, was in the jet, took off, and arrived at Love Field. Bob Walker, our Channel 8 newsman, stood by as we, in turn, fed the other television stations on the president's arrival in Love Field. And he was met by Mayor and Mrs. Cabell, by Mr. Eric Johnson, another of the dignitaries who were to uh, share the speaker's table at Market Hall this afternoon as he was to give an address. And at the time, uh, Bob Walker remarked after the president met the official welcoming group as he... Uh, went out of his way to shake the hands of those who had lined the fences, having come out to Love Field this morning very early, and uh, ignoring the possibility of rain. Of course, the sky is cleared and the clouds weren't to be seen, but the president shook all of the hands, and we saw the Secret Service men, and they followed him, and I wondered uh, at the time just how effective, of course, you uh, have to be as effective as you can be, but there are human errors, and you can't cover all areas, and the Secret Service men who... Uh, must have the most difficult task in the world in guarding the president. We're behind him at every angle as he shook the hands of everyone. I noticed a uh, high school girl shook the president's hand, and then at about, uh, oh, I'd say 15 minutes until 12, the motorcade left Love Field, heading for its predetermined route down uh, Lemon Avenue into the downtown area, and they were to come down Commerce and turn right on Houston, rather to come down Maine and turn right on Houston over to Elm, turn left on Elm, down under the now uh, spot that uh, will be remembered, I'm sure, as the years pass, as the place where an attempt, and we hope the attempt remains in the press releases, was made on the life of the President of the United States. Here is the, uh, in case you have tuned in, uh, you probably know, of course, as much as I do, but this is the bulletin that came over the United Press, so I'll be repeating. But this is what has happened so far. President Kennedy and Governor John Connolly of Texas have been cut down by assassin's bullets. They were shot as they turned toward downtown Dallas in an open car. The president, his limp body, and the arms of his wife was rushed to Parkland Hospital. The governor also was taken to the same hospital. Clint Hill, a Secret Service agent assigned to Mrs. Kennedy, made a statement. Uh, no, he said he's dead, but he isn't. But this is what the gentleman said at the time as the president was lifted from the rear of the White House touring car. Mr. Kennedy was rushed to an emergency room in the hospital. Other White House officials were in doubt as the corridors of the hospital erupted in pandemonium. The incident occurred just east of the triple underpass facing a park in downtown area. President Kennedy's mother and father have been advised that their son was shot in Dallas. And the Secret Service says the president remains in the emergency room at the hospital while Governor Connolly was moved to the general operating room. One Secret Service man was overheard telling another that there was no need to move the president because emergency facilities were entirely adequate in the emergency room, and two Roman Catholic priests have been summoned to the emergency room where the president is. A White House spokesman said someone had asked for the priests. Uh, we got audio. You, you fellas, don't be afraid. If you have something to do, go ahead and say it, you know, because the people understand. Uh, I'd like to ask this of you. Please do not call the police department. Do not call the radio stations, the television stations. Do not call the hospital. Particularly, do not call Parkland Hospital. Those lines are needed. Every telephone in that building will have to be made available to the Secret Service and to the people who are working to save the life of the President. Please do not call the, the, the Parkland Hospital. Do not call the television station. Our switchboard has been tied up for the last 25 minutes now. Do not call. In fact, it might be a good idea with all the long-distance calls coming out here, unless a, a telephone call is absolutely necessary, not to make the call. Uh, are we ready in the newsroom now? Yes, we, are. we are. Okay. Bobby, why don't you just take your shot over there and pan around, and we will walk over and pick up the audio.
Bobby. Uh, just turn the mic on. I can't hear you, Johnny. What do you want? You want me to move back a little bit? Is it all right now? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the newsroom of our radio and television station. As you can see, most of the boys are out. Uh, Bert, let's see. Let's get reorganized here. Grab that cable over there. We're on the air, Bert, and let's talk to you just a minute here. Is this all right? Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you the chief cameraman and assistant news director of WFA Television. This is Bert Schiff. Bert, we have brought the people pretty much up to date. Uh, would you tell them exactly what you know as of this point? Well, Jay, I was standing at the uh, trademark waiting his arrival there. All of a sudden, the, uh, we saw them approaching. They didn't slow down. As a matter of fact, they were going 70, 80 miles an hour past us. I, everybody was unknowingly, uh, didn't know what happened there at the trademark. And then uh, I jumped in a police car and went to Parkland. When I got there, I found that, uh, that nobody knew too much about where he was hit, but they knew that the president was shot in the head. This is what I've been told now, Jay. The president was shot in the head. Conley was shot in the chest. Both of them are still alive when I left the hospital. Do you have some film? And uh, Yeah, I have film well, at the hospital. You get the film and see if you can get it developed real quick. Yeah, and I will. We'll put it on the air and, and uh, run through. Uh, one thing, one quote we got out there was Yarbrough said, the scene was too gruesome to describe. I know. And uh, that's, I've spent most of my time, so I'm going to get the film ready now. Good. Ladies and gentlemen, let me bring you up to date. Jerry Haynes and I were within about 100 yards of where the president was shot this afternoon on, on the grassy mole there. And you will understand if uh, we repeat ourselves, it's for the benefit of the people who have tuned in late. We are pre presently televising over WFAA television. The... Uh, from our newsroom, all that we know as of this moment, and as you can imagine, some of the stories that you will hear are not factual. The story that I told a few minutes ago about, we heard that six or eight people were wounded. This is not true because we only heard three shots and Jerry and I were witnesses. We will have film on the air. Our mobile cruiser is either at or rushing to Parkland Hospital. We will have word from there. Uh, there was a gentleman who uh, was an eyewitness. Helen, is he here? Mr. Nunley, would you come in, please? Uh, when I first looked over the balcony to where the chaos was taking place, this gentleman and his wife and two children were on the grass. Now, once again, if you joined us originally when we cut into the program about a quarter to one o'clock, um, you heard his statement. Mr. Nunley, would you tell us once again exactly what, Mr. Newman, I'm sorry, look right there. Mr. Uh, Newman, will you tell us exactly what you know? Well, my wife and uh, my two sons were standing at the curb looking at the president approaching us, and we heard a blast, and the president looked like that he right jumped up in his seat, and by that time he was directly in front of us, and then he, we seen him... Uh, get shot in the side of the head and he fell back in the seat and mm -hmm. Governor Connolly was holding his stomach. And the shots and were almost simultaneously, weren't they? Yes, sir. They were probably 10 seconds apart. Do you know apart. who fired the third shot? I didn't hear. A I, I don't recall a third shot. There may have been. I, at, we hit, my family hit the ground and I don't recall a third shot. Uh, I just couldn't, I'm not certain of that. I do know I heard two shots. Yeah, I heard three. I know you there heard were three. three. Well, yeah, I said to Jerry after the second shot, I said, my God, those are gunshots. And I, uh, sure enough, they were, unfortunately. Let me bring you up to date now. Uh, yeah, I understand that we're having trouble in here with a pickup, so we'll move back to the studio. Is that correct? Just a minute. Ed, what is it you said? This is Ed Pfeiffer, our station manager. Excuse me just a minute. You want to go have a cup of coffee, and we'll be right back. Better, Jay, if we move this back into the studio, okay. uh, in that it's very difficult to hear on the air. The audio's bad. Okay, good. Okay, we'll move back in the studio. Jerry is standing by in there now. Uh, let's see. Bert, as soon as the film is ready, you'll let us know so we can run it. Has ABC called from New York? I have no idea. Okay, let's go back in the studio. Thank you very much. the uh, time now. We're back at studio here where the news is given each day 
in the weather and the sports, known as Studio B here at WFAA Television. Time now is, uh, in 15 seconds, will be uh, 1.15, so it was approximately, yeah. Yes, See, I'm trying to find out, uh, uh oh. Uh, I beg your pardon? So, uh, speak, uh, go ahead, Ed. I can. Good. I understand that we are feeding two of the networks at this moment. Is that correct? Uh, well, since this is the case, I think we should start from scratch again and explain to you what happened. Would you see that Mr. Nunley or Mrs. Nunley come back in so that we can talk to them? Jerry Haynes and I were about 100 yards. My name is Jay Watson. We're about 100 yards from where President Kennedy was shot this afternoon at approximately 1235 Central, time. Central Standard Time. Uh, the president, we know that he has been shot. We know that the top surgical people in Dallas have been called to Parkland Hospital. And two we priests. all, two and two priests have been summoned. And I think that sums up the situation as of now. It says here, Jay, that President Kennedy has been given blood transfusions in Parkland Hospital in Dallas in an effort to save the president's life after he and Texas Governor John Connolly was shot as the president was traveling on the outskirts of Dallas in a motorcade. Good, Jared, let me bring... Uh, sure. Newman, I, you Mrs. Newman, would you come in, please, and let me get your account of your eyewitness. You just sit right over here. And a little boy. Did you get some coffee, finally? I don't drink coffee. Well, would you like to have something? I know that no, you... No, uh, my stomach's kind of churning. I'm afraid that I won't be able to drink it. Mrs. Nunley. No, Newman. Newman, I've been calling you. I'm sorry. I don't even remember my own name, really. It's terrible. Tell me what happened. We were standing next to the curb so the children could see the president, and the car was just up a piece from us, and this shot fired out, and I thought it was a firecracker. And the president kind of raised up in his seat, and uh, I thought, you know, he was kind of going along with a gag or something. And then all of a sudden, this next one popped, and Governor Conley grabbed his stomach and kind of laid over to the side. And then another one, it was just all so fast, and President Kenny reached up and grabbed, looked like he grabbed his ear, and blood just started gushing out. And uh, my husband said, quick, get down. And I grabbed the baby, and we ran and laid down on the grass, and I got on top of him. It was just, just right by us when it all happened, just right in front of us. It was... It's well, when I saw you looking over the balcony there, you and your you, your husband and your two little children, who's this uh, one now? This is James Clayton. Hi, baby. Can you say hi? He's got some candy. What's he doing? He didn't talk. He's cute. <laughs> he didn't say anything. Oh, he can talk. Does he? He can say thank you. Have you seen President Kennedy before? Uh, we were out at the airport, and we didn't get a very good view of him. And uh, so we decided we'd try to get downtown to see him because uh, Billy, that's our youngest son, is getting old enough that he remembers things like that, and we wanted him to be able to say that he saw President Kennedy. And, and uh, now he will be able to say that he saw President Kennedy when he was shot. It, yes, it, he's already saying, Mother, why would someone want to shoot President Kennedy? Um, children, you don't realize how they catch on to things, but he's already talking about why would they want to kill him? And, and that's a question that everyone would ask. You didn't ask. see anybody? You didn't no, see uh, it, it happened so fast that you didn't have a chance to, to see anything. It, it just was too fast. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you for coming down. I appreciate your time very much, and I'm, I know that you're upset, and I hope that we didn't embarrass you in any way. No. And uh, good luck to you and your family and to your thank two you. little boys, and tell your husband, too, that we appreciate his time and trouble very much. Thank you. Uh, you people who are looking in will excuse us if we sort of get organized on the air here. Bobby, uh, I understand that we have some film that is uh, that we will be that is in the process that is being. Bert Ship has some, I think, one of our news, but he, it is being processed at the moment, so we will have that film. We are rushing our mobile cruiser. Beg pardon. Physically, it might be a good idea for people who are watching who have never been to Dallas before. To, uh, I think, I'll tell you what let's do, is Sam Smith around, our artist, Sam, if we can have a piece of cardboard and a piece of chalk, we'll try to explain to you exactly where the location is in Dallas, Texas. Um, will someone see if uh, we can have something to do a little artwork? He's on his way, good. But we'll, we'll, we'll have a, uh, 
we'll have a, a little drawing for you of where it is this morning. I tell you, Bob, is Turner, uh, is he still directing? Yes. Okay, Bob, if you will get the film out, the videotape that we made this morning, and take about four or five minutes out of it, the part where we had President and Mrs. Kennedy shaking hands with the people up at the rail, let's run that in just a few minutes, if you will. Vicki, would you get me some coffee, please, ma'am? The, motor uh, the motorcade, for all practical purposes, uh, was finished. Uh, of course, they were to yeah. go down the rest of the, and go under what we call in Dallas our triple underpass. Elm Street runs down a gently sloping uh, incline as it goes west, and the president's official car had just turned off of another street, Main, which is one block south of Elm. It was through all the crowd because yes. from there on out to what we call the uh, trademark is a f uh, eight lane freeway. Mm -hmm. And there's so. some industrial areas right. and a few of the people off from lunch, but the president for the, had uh, seen all of the crowd who had gathered. And so as he turned, the presidential uh, motor car, going down at an incline of about, uh, oh, 15 to 20 degrees, for all practical purposes, the uh, parade in Dallas was over. And we had turned ourselves to go back to WFAA when those three shots rang out at the time, not sounding like shots, but uh, you did remark. Yeah, I said, my God, those are gunshots. Minutes. And the people started screaming, and we ran over and looked over. Yeah, go ahead, set it up here. I don't the gunshots occurred about 12.35 this afternoon, Let's... and it is now 1.20 Central Time. Okay, uh, we need something to write with, and then we'll be in business to try to show you where this took place in the city of Dallas. And I'm not... Uh... The tape's ready, Jay. The tape is ready. Well, while we draw this out, this tape was made earlier this morning in a feed that WFAA picked up and originated for the stations in Dallas, WFAA, KRLD, KTVT, and uh, WBAP. Uh, he arrived at about one, uh, about 11.35, almost to the hour from when he was shot at Love Field. Let's take about four or five minutes, uh, and I'll tell you when, Bobby. Let's take the tape. Now, this is pre-taped. This is a tape that we made this morning. Let's look at that, shall we? Now running over to get behind other fences to catch a better glimpse of... Uh, the uh, caravan, as it would leave, will leave here shortly and go to downtown Dallas. The president is up to the fence now, shaking hands with people. The president and his wife are right up on the fence. The press is standing up high, getting a lot of shots of this. He's uh, done as he has done in several places. He's broken away from his uh, planned... Uh, plan and uh, gone right up to the fence to shake hands with people. This is great for the people and uh, makes the eggshells even thinner for the Secret Service whose job it is to guard the man. But the audience loves this. Mrs. Kennedy's uh, beautiful pillbox hat was the only thing that gave it away, I saw the hat, and I knew they were there. And of course, the press going high and shooting right down below, as the president and his wife kind of moving along the gate. People yelling at them, people running on the inside now, trying to come down at this end of the gate, this end of the fenced-off area, hoping that the president and his wife will move along the fence. There you see the crowd just matted around. They have a lot of people out with cameras just holding them up and snapping away and hoping to get a, a picture out of their very own camera of the president and his wife. The president still walking along that inside fence, shaking hands, uh, talking with people who have come out to greet him. Uh, 
uh, they didn't expect this. Now as he becomes more visible down to this end, the people cheer. And here they come, right down toward us. I can uh, see Mrs. Kennedy. And they're going to come right on down and shake hands with everybody. Mrs. Kennedy gave a lovely smile and a wave at that time. Mrs. Kennedy right up. There's the president shaking hands with the people. He's uh, waving at a lot of people, smiling, Secret Service men all around. Boy, this is something. They break right away and come right up to the fence. And the people who waited all morning in this fence are rewarded with a glimpse, and a lot of them with a close look and a handshake with the president of the United States and his wife. And he's coming right down to uh, toward us and toward our uh, fine camera positions here. The press is having a field day. Somebody perched up on somebody's shoulders. Secret Service right along with the president, of course. The president passes right in front of a Dallas police officer, right in front of our cameras now. Somebody patted his shoulder. Mrs. Kennedy coming along behind him, grinning all the while. The president saying, thank you very much. If I may be permitted to, to read a presidential lip movement. In the side of... This is a bonus for the people who have waited out here. Now, Mrs. Kennedy, right along behind him. President still moving uh, over towards some phone booths that were set up for the press. The people surging up toward that fence. We interrupt this. The uh, wait just a minute. I hear. Just a moment. It's the trademark. All right. Secret Service man. Let's go to the Secret Service. Let's go to the trademark, Bobby. Is that correct? All right. Take it. Let's see what we have. Final as of this morning. Uh, rift has existed for a long time with the Democratic Party in Texas, and this rift. The Democrats will tell you whether they be conservatives or loyalists or liberals or moderates or whatever faction of the Democratic Party they belong to in Texas. They all say that this is uh, just an inter-party fight and we can all get together when the president comes to town. Well, finally they did get together. The big uh, bone of contention had been whether or not Senator Ralph Yarbrough, who is considered in, certainly in the liberal wing of the party, would be seated at the head table. He does not get along too well with Vice President Johnson or with Governor Conley. The word was that last night uh, the uh, senator refused to ride in the motorcade in the same car with Vice President Johnson. Uh, but today, all was to have been pretty much peaches and cream, uh, as it were. Uh, they were all going to sit at the head table and break bread together on this Friday, the 22nd of November. And then, before they could ever reach this market hall, the word is that the president has been killed, that one of his agents is dead, and the governor of Texas is wounded. From the trademark in Dallas, Texas, this is Eddie Barker. Uh, that was the CBS pickup here in Dallas. Eddie Barker, the news director of KRLD, bringing you up to date. Uh, the reason that the mobile unit was set up at the trademark that at 1 o'clock today, President Kennedy was scheduled to make a speech. Now, on my right and on your left is a crude, and you'll excuse the artwork, with apologies to you, Sam, of where in Dallas the shooting took place today. Uh, Dallas is off to your left. This is Main Street. This is the county courthouse and the jailhouse in this block here. This is the triple underpass that we have referred to. This is where President Kennedy, Johnson, and I, as I understand it now, a Secret Service man was shot at about, tw and Conley, I'm sorry, Conley was shot at approximately uh, 12.35 today. And from our eyewitness that you saw earlier, was shot from up in here. This is an overpass going over these streets. We call it our triple underpass because there's another one was shot from here. Conley arrived last night in Fort Worth to a warm reception. It was raining up until about, in Dallas and in Fort Worth, up until about, 
Oh, I guess 9.30 or 10 o'clock this morning, and everybody was saying, well, the president brought the rain with him because those of you who have been in this area recently know how bad we have needed the rain. Uh, he made a speech this morning at 9 o'clock that was carried on television about, at, uh, I beg your pardon? Back to Fisher, back to Let's go back to the network now and see what they have. The operating room, that the vice president is fine. She was taken back into another first floor room where Johnson originally had gone, asked if her husband also had been wounded. She shook her head negatively. She said he had not been. Secret Service men pushed reporters away and permitted no more questions. Of course, you can imagine the confusion, the emergency circumstances, uh, the confusion that must exist around that hospital. Now we understand that we are ready to switch to Washington for a report from there. We are ready to go to Washington. Come in, Washington. We are ready to switch to Washington for a direct report from there, but for some reason, uh, under the circumstances, we seem to be having a little difficulty with that, which I'm sure will be cleared up in a moment. Come in, Washington. We were told from our control room here in New York that Washington was standing uh, by with a report, but uh, we've been unable to reach them at this moment. I'm sure that uh, in a matter of seconds, perhaps in another minute or two, we will be able to reach Washington. Did you have something else, Ed no, Silverman? I, I just thought we might recap for those who probably heard about it uh, just a few moments ago. I think that's uh, a good idea. What happened that the president and uh, Governor Connolly were shot on, on their motorcade as it entered another pass uh, while going through uh, downtown Dallas. And from the shots of the first fire, there were thought to be three. That uh, later was confirmed there were four shots. The president uh, fell over face down. Governor Connolly apparently was wounded in the body. Uh, he fell forward. Uh, Mrs. Kennedy uh, leaped up and cried, oh no, and uh, tried to uh, hold the president's head up. Uh, blood was seen on the president's head. And uh, a Secret Service uh, agent apparently was shot by one of the uh, assassin's bullets as well. And of course, you have it from there, Ron. Thanks very much, Ed. Uh, in case you did join us late or uh, had not heard the news, those are the facts uh, so far as we know them up to this time. And last, I'm receiving word now. We have, re we have received word that two priests who were with the president have reported that the president is dead. Now, here, here again, we must, we must uh, emphasize that this is not an official announcement. It has not been announced by the White House or anyone in the official party traveling with the president. But uh, the Associated Press quotes two priests who were with the president, stating that he died from the bullet wounds or wound inflicted upon him by a sniper. We have to assume that it was a sniper who fired from a considerable distance. The president was given the last rites of the Roman Catholic Church at about one o'clock uh, Dallas time. And at that time, the first reports were that the president was still alive. However, uh, this latest word says that uh, the priests were under the impression the president was dead at the time the last rites were administered. Now, we, of course, are going to keep the air here, and we will bring you whatever reports come in as they come in from uh, the wire services, from our reporters on the scene, and from Washington and Dallas directly. We will be going to uh, Washington before long for a direct report from there. Ed Silverman is sitting here beside me. He has a telephone. Uh, to Dallas and is in touch with uh, our reporter Bill Lord who is at the hospital and has been uh, in touch with people at the scene. Ed, is there anything uh, new there? No, there is nothing uh, new, uh, Ron. Uh, Bill left the phone to check with the sheriff's office. He did confirm the uh, death of the Secret uh, Service agent. The fact that at least a dozen eyewitnesses have been uh, brought in for interrogation and the fact that one suspect has been picked up. He is in there being questioned now. There have been no details. Everyone is being very closed-mouthed in the sheriff's office. And, of course, there is a great deal of rumor, uh, Bill mentioned, a great deal of rumor, as is uh, understandable at a time like this. 
So we would hesitate to pass any of that along with stick strictly with the facts as we get them. Thank you, Ed Silverman. Now we're going to try again to switch to Washington and Edward P. Morgan. that problem straightened out shortly. We have a report that Senator Edward Kennedy, the president's brother, was presiding over the Senate today when word came that the president had been shot. An aide informed him and he rushed out of the Senate chamber. Attorney General Robert Kennedy, the president's younger brother and closest advisor, was having lunch at home when the word came of the shooting. His personal, the president's personal secretary, said the attorney general was remaining at the Kennedy uh, Hickory Hill estate in McLean, Virginia, uh, awaiting further word. Newsmen carried the word to House Speaker John McCormick at a luncheon table in Washington. He said, this is terrible. All I can say is that it is a terrible thing and all Americans of all religions and faiths are praying for the President and Governor Connolly. Now, now we're receiving a, uh, a report here. The United Press reports The United Press the reports that, that the president died at 1.35. That would be 1.35 Eastern Time, I presume. Uh, that would have been uh, about uh, 1.35 Central Time. That was only about two minutes ago. Now, that, again, is a, a United Press International uh, report. It is not attributed. We do not know uh, whether that is an official announcement by uh, anyone in the Kennedy party. We have another photograph of Mr. Kennedy in the motorcade, which was taken minutes before the assassination attempt. This is a uh, still photograph of the president in the motorcade. You see he's riding in an open car, and we're informed at the time that the shot struck him, he was standing in that car, uh, unfortunately, apparently making a good target for uh, the sniper who was hiding somewhere and may have fired from a considerable distance uh, probably with a high-powered rifle, considering the accuracy with which he shot. And uh, also the fact that uh, one of the Secret Service agents was killed. The Secret Service agents normally walk directly beside the car on either side. We do not see any in this photograph, but usually uh, two or three Secret Service agents will walk on either side of the car uh, so that they are there to uh, spot any, anyone who looks like a, a troublemaker. Government sources now confirm, we have this from Washington, government sources now confirm that President Kennedy is dead. So that apparently is the final word and an incredible event that I am sure no one except the assassin himself could have possibly imagined would occur.